Oh, hi, everyone. I can't say how much I'm glad to be with you again another year, with this lovely view community and everything that's going on. I'm so proud with whatever we in introduced before my friends, Sebastian, Anthony, and Daniel. So uh, for those uh, who don't know me, I'm Puya, uh, also known as PI0 in GitHub. Uh, I built uh, Nitro, Nux3, and OnJS packages. Uh, well, all of my hobbies are coding, so either I'm coding JavaScript or coding again. I love cats, sushi, uh, for some reason, and JavaScript. And yeah, I make many packages. Uh, if you like to, you can follow me in both GitHub and Twitter. Uh, would be really have to, happy to have a chat. So uh, we heard a lot about Nitro. Let's see uh, more in depth. What is Nitro? If uh, you never heard about Nitro, Nitro is a framework, is a meta framework similar to Nux itself uh, that lets you to create your own servers without worrying about anything. You can use the file system API to create your routes. You can use plugins. You can uh, configure uh, different providers, just like Nux modules. And also, you can use Nitro out of the box with Nux3. Uh, and the main benefit of using Nitro is that uh, other than the ultimate experience that you give, uh, while you save any uh, existing library you have, you can just deploy it anywhere. Uh, as you could see, like uh, it could be a Node.js server, it could be Dino deploy, it could be Cloudflare workers, or even a browser. You can use browser as a server because just Nitro allows it. Uh, Nitro was born uh, almost two years ago uh, when I was working on uh, Nux3, creating Nux3. Uh, at that point, we thought uh, maybe it's the best idea that we decouple it to make the development better, also allow everyone to benefit from the same uh, infrastructure that we are making. Uh, as of today, it probably has more than 1,000 uh, commits, more than 500 pull requests, and 90 uh, dear contributors. Uh, Nitro is made from uh, many various packages uh, from uh, OnJS ecosystem, including OnStorage or H3 that you heard about, uh, and it's built using uh, TypeScript. Uh, today we have, I think, more than 15 uh, uh, providers out of the box. Of course, you can integrate any provider you want. You can deploy it to any hosting solution you want. And uh, one of the most important points is that it works in harmony with Nux. So same experience you have for Nux to create a full stack application for a SSR application. You can have exactly the same experience with Nitro. Why? Because they all share the same ecosystem of packages. Uh, Nitro, uh, same as Nux, uh, is based on two uh, important concepts. Less code. Uh, you don't need to write any boilerplate you want. You don't need to configure uh, a roll-up bundler. You don't need to configure an optimizer for uh, production. You need to uh, implement an HMR server. Nitro just does everything that is required to develop a web server. Either it's a front-end web server or it's an API web server. And yeah, it just makes life easier. But on the other hand, again, same as Nux, when you feel you want to extend somewhere in Nitro, uh, you just use the configuration API. And in fact, Every deployment preset that we have, every uh, addition that we have in uh, Nitro is powered by the same configuration API because it was so powerful. And if you want to go even beyond that, you can use Nitro hooks to uh, hook into the internals of Nitro. Uh, Nitro is built on a hybrid architecture based on web platforms that will be futuristic to be working natively with platforms like Cloudflare Workers. But on the other hand, uh, we have many useful libraries that are still today built for Node.js because Node.js is the dominant uh, for the backend uh, development for JavaScript applications. And uh, the art of Nitro is that it converts your code. So we can keep any dependency you have, even if you have another server-based file, for example, uh, Express. And uh, many libraries today, unfortunately, they are built for Node.js. Nitro uses an extensive framework called OnEnv to translate them uh, into a really lightweight uh, transformer layer and make them work in any place, any other place. And uh, on top of that, uh, any new API that we're introducing in Nitro is based on these platform APIs. For example, Fetch. You don't have to use Axios or XHR anymore. We have Web Crypto. We use uh, new technologies that are made for web platform, but you can use them for creating a really futuristic web server. So uh, Nitro provides an abstraction layer to make it possible how we can make uh, deploy uh, several applications uh, 
to different providers, but not changing our code. Uh, Nitro provides uh, an abstraction layers. As you could see by Daniel's examples, uh, the route rules. Route rules allow you to define uh, any definition of routing. It can be for caching, it can be for redirects, it can be for headers, it can be framework dependent, like uh, enabling or disabling server-side rendering. And Nitro smartly maps these rules to the platform native uh, rules. So this way, uh, it works in harmony with any provider you have. And you don't need to change or refactor your code when you change your deployment provider. Nitro also provides a really powerful uh, API, which we will see the benchmarks in the next slides, for uh, cache handling, uh, which allows you to support cache. I mean, nowadays, to be honest, uh, you can just uh, choose different providers because they just sell you the caching, while Nitro provides it for free. You can just use any platform you want. You can use your own hosting system and have exactly the same technology. It's all your freedom. Nitro also provides a key value storage layer uh, to make your uh, databases. You can uh, have like a dynamic configuration inside it. You can create your own uh, small uh, applications with it. And it's fully platform agnostic. Uh, so no matter where you deploy, no matter what provider or like a storage layer you choose, you can just use the same API and it just works with different providers. Also, we will see some spoiler news uh, in the future uh, about this storage layer. Uh, Nitro also provides a framework for SSR rendering, which is how it's integrated with Nux and also for providing a static asset rendering. And of course, uh, the main thing for creating a server is to create routes for it and API routes for it, which is powered by S3. Uh, speaking of S3, I'm so uh, proud uh, that S3 uh, was born alongside with Nitro and Nux3 project. Uh, initially, we wanted to make something compatible with Express, but lightweight, not legacy dependencies. Uh, eventually, uh, following the same philosophy of uh, Vue.js, uh, I designed S3 in a way that is a composable uh, server framework. So Nitro is super lightweight, not because it just has less line of code. It's lightweight because uh, it progressively improves and adds features as you use them. Uh, despite the legacy frameworks that you uh, use a middleware system, in S3, everything is a composable. As you can see in this example, which is also built in, you can just use a composable to access a user session. You don't need to create a global uh, middleware for that. You can easily access the router parameters. You can throw errors which are formatted. And you can directly actually uh, return a response, which is going to be stringified. And uh, everything is super fast uh, comparing to other frameworks like that. Uh, you can read more about uh, the other utilities. I think there are more, more than 20 uh, utilities right now in the H3. Uh, there is a small documentation about them in the repo. And you can actually use uh, H3 directly for any project uh, with or without Nux or Nitro. So you can also create your mini servers. Uh, this slide is something that uh, I was looking for months, maybe, uh, to provide a stable API. And I myself was really shocked last night when I was uh, benchmarking again. It's the SWR, which is a caching strategy. I will explain better later. Uh, that we support with Nitro with one line of configuration. And uh, I have to admit, it's a life changer. Uh, you can see the results. Uh, here uh, is the re render latency. It means that uh, the first one is a normal Nux application that basically shows a hello world. Uh, as we go down, uh, we, ha we add more latency. This latency, what it could be? It could be a simple fetch. You, uh, unless you are making a static website, you are fetching something. You are fetching a dynamic API. And this can increase. Uh, usually, I think a median is like 15 uh, to 75 milliseconds for production applications. And uh, as you add the latency, uh, you can see the small blue ones. Uh, it doesn't matter how big your server. It's uh, built, built on, uh, like these benchmarks are made on a closed server, which has super powerful resources. Uh, it could handle millions of requests. But as you can see, it just slows down. Why? Uh, because uh, the network is slow. It doesn't matter how much faster server you have. You have. It doesn't matter how much uh, pay for a price for that. It's going to be slow because we have latency. And with one second of SWR, which is added by a single configuration, you can see how we can boost the server. And uh, this boost could be five times 
with a Hello World application to probably something 1,000 times faster. And uh, it is a super stable API. Uh, we take super measures uh, to make sure that it doesn't have cache conflicts. It's safe to cache the production responses. And you just have it out of the box. You don't need to use any spe special provider. You don't need to use any special uh, cache storage system. Actually, we can use on a storage layer to, to choose your own caching system. And at the same time, have this amazingly big performance boost. So uh, here's our some uh, more uh, in-depth uh, performance benchmarks into the previous benchmark. Uh, for Nitro, we use a library called Radix3, which is uh, basically a tree for routing. And it's super optimized. It, use, it uses a really optimized algorithm. It can handle more than 1 million operations per second for matching a route. But let's just add something to the, uh, to the game. Just using a uh, HTTP framework, this 1 million match goes down to 69,000. Why? Because there's overhead for network requests, for handling uh, logics. And uh, I'm not lying, it's one of the fastest frameworks. You can compare, uh, compare it to a traditional framework like Express. Even without the matcher, it's still faster. When we add another layer to top of it, uh, which probably could be an SSR layer for rendering your application, this number goes down because we have to run a view renderer, we have to concatenate some strings, and then respond to the user. And to be honest, it's not uh, that big. So uh, if you're making an application, uh, basically you probably don't have to uh, you know, care about what's the, uh, the raw uh, benchmark performance. It doesn't matter to use Express or H3 or anything else. We could make the fastest frameworks in the world, and still your application suffers from performance. Uh, now consider we have a more, if one fetch latency. With one fetch, which is something probably all of us are using or in, the, uh, in our applications, this number goes down to 187. It's super low, isn't it? So uh, thinking in a uh, real-world uh, use case, uh, this matters. This matters to use a caching strategy to uh, boost up and uh, speed up your applications, which is the magic of this stabilizer strategy, which you can see uh, by just adding a stabilizer strategy, we beat the performances even faster than a normal SSR and adding any uh, fetch uh, latency. So how a stabilizer works? Uh, Normally, when uh, you have a web server, each request comes, it gets processed, uh, it maybe makes some subsequent re requests on the server side, and you get the response. Uh, Stabilized strategy uh, is a caching system which is non blocking. When the first request comes, uh, first we tell the user, please wait, we are fetching it for you, we render it on the back end, and re return the response. During the first uh, second, it could be more than one request, it could be thousands of requests. We uh, do the same for all of the users because probably it's a landing page. Everyone wants to see the same thing uh, in real time, but it's basically the same response. So we don't need to make it 1,000 times if there are 1,000 requests in per second. We just make it once. And one, once that one second happens, uh, we just consider the response is stale. Uh, when the response is stale, uh, we fetch it in the background. We still don't block the users. Users that are in the stage of B, they get a re response that is one second older. Doesn't matter, probably. And uh, during that time, we are still not blocking everyone. And once we refresh the cache, we start responding everyone the new response. And with this new uh, and simple uh, caching mechanism, we can scale up and speed up applications probably 500 times more in a real world scenario. And uh, well, uh, to be honest, this is the real problem. Like, we made the fastest HTTP framework. We make Nux SSR super optimized and fast. View SSR is fast. But a simple fetch just blows everything. So uh, this solution makes sense for many scenarios, especially in SSR applications. And uh, to go even further, uh, I try to use a new, another feature of Nitro, which is cluster. It, as you can see, uh, it can speed up uh, both performances by, uh, I think, a uh, scale of five times more sometimes. Uh, still, if you use a cluster, you can use you know, Kubernetes for anything to scale up your application. It doesn't matter. It's still slow without caching. And uh, this caching is not easy uh, to support, I don't lie. And Nitro just made it easy. 
you just use a few lines of route rules to enable the caching, and you have it everywhere guaranteed. And when the platform supports it natively, like Vercel, we integrate with them automatically for you without any other configuration, because route rules map to the native platform, and it works. Uh, during my slides, I wanted to uh, take a few moments from you. Actually, this slide is uh, some notes from, from my friends uh, from Iran. They are uh, basically a religious community every year. They was joining us online to watch the events. Uh, at the same time, we are talking about these technologies. People are fighting for their freedom, basic, the basic human rights there, and uh, it's really hard for them to be heard because uh, of the internet censorship. Uh, there are imprisoned people. There are talented people, programmers I know personally. I know there are really nice people. Uh, they was always working on these technologies, and they don't have a chance to say. And uh, I have to say, I really appreciate my friends. I know many of you probably heard about uh, the process in Iran. And many people and my friends, was their voice uh, really appreciated. And I'm just practicing the message that they were saying they miss you. And uh, they really hope to uh, see something uh, happen there. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, so enough of just marketing Nitro. I think everyone just now knows uh, how Nitro is great. If you are using Nitro, you probably are enjoying it. Some exciting news that we just released last night with Daniel uh, and today on Nux 3.2 and Nitro 2.2. Uh, first of all is the binary storage support. First, we made a KBS storage for simple operations like configuration for caching. We usually need a simple JavaScript object. But we was thinking that, hey, it could be much better. You could also upload your assets there. You could support, you know, you could basically make a CMS with just pure Nux. No additional dependencies, nothing at all. And this new system, uh, the raw system of on storage, just allows this. And something cool about it is that uh, it transforms the assets to the platform uh, raw format. If you use a key value like Redis that probably doesn't support or implement it yet, the raw support, it just converts them. So you can still have your full freedom. You can choose any key value storage you want and use this new system to also store your binary assets. It could be images. It could be WebAssembly assets. It could be anything. And it just works out of the box now. Uh, the second thing, which is a long-wanted uh, feature we wanted, is the built-in session support. So there are really cool libraries out there, like AutoJS, which I'm super happy that they made the decision to make it uh, framework independent. Uh, still, uh, after working on Nux as module for a few years, I, I always felt that we need something built in to the framework to make the authentication support possible. You don't need to use any other libraries. You have to use the full power of the framework to make your sessions. And this super simple utility makes everything possible. Uh, out of the box, it integrates with the cookies. It inter uh, initiates a super secure cookie. You don't need a storage because it's a carrier. It's encrypted uh, in the browser. It's using uh, a state-of-the-art uh, encryption using crypto module, which we made it possible to be working in any different uh, environment. And you can also choose a different strategy to use token-based. And uh, it basically handles everything for you as long as you provide a password to the session and it should be secret per deployment. It's basically also the same technology that Next.js uh, uh, uses for us. And yeah, you can just make your uh, authentication system just like that. It integrates with Nitro, it integrates with Nux, and any custom solution. Uh, there is also a new example we are adding to the Nux slash examples. You can see in the future uh, how to use this feature. But I'm really excited about this because of the simplicity. We are always looking for simplicity in Nux, and something like this uh, allows you to just imagine how you want to implement authentication. Usually it's hard, like, you know, there are some ready to use presets, but as long as you want to customize them, customize the behavior, it's hard. While using these uh, basic utilities, you can just write your own logic and uh, th just that. Uh, the other thing that I'm super excited and uh, I think Daniel also mentioned in the slides is that finally we have a runtime proxy. This runtime proxy, it's uh, simple but also at the same time really advanced. 
as you can see, we can use the same proxy to rewrite the routes. Powered by the direct uh, fetching technology that we have in Nitro, uh, you can have sub requests from a request, uh, and they don't actually make a network call. So you can use uh, the web standard fetch for every subsequent request. You can use the proxy, which is again powered by the same fetch, which is why it's universal and web native, and you can use it everywhere. So basically, these route rules can be mapped to your deployment platform. If it doesn't support, no worries. Nitro just handles for you. Also, if you want to go uh, more advanced, you can also use your own event handlers. You can programmatically use the proxy API, which is exposed from S3. And uh, you can uh, customize the behavior. But the route rules alone should probably provide many of the requirement requests that uh, many users was asking us in the past. Uh, the uh, two other things that I'm also excited about is uh, the native context. Usually, Nitro provides an abstraction uh, to make it easier. But uh, sometimes there are platforms like Cloudflare that provide a platform-dependent uh, API, like accessing you to the country of the requester, uh, some more additional context. Uh, using onenv, uh, which, which is the library that makes direct fetch possible, now we uh, transform this context to the event. And you can just access the platform native uh, context from there. And the other thing is uh, fetch, which is bound to the events, uh, which has some unique uh, possibility. Traditionally, in Nox, if, if you wanted to have SSR application, uh, you had to proxy the headers. So imagine uh, you have a request from the user to the server. It's authenticated. And you want to make an API call that needs that authentication information. You usually have to make it manual. And to be honest, it's super annoying. When I was working on that example, the starter for authentication, it was one of the pains. And it, this just takes the pain away, because it transfers automatically both the context and the headers to the subsequent requests. And uh, it's also safe, because it's bound to the context. You don't have to worry about context sharing. Uh, one of the other things is that uh, we finally support auto imports, which Anthony showed, uh, for the server side and Nitro. So uh, you can keep uh, using the same composable strategy. You are building your view applications to use uh, and build your server applications. Instead of a traditional middleware, you can just create utilities inside the utilities directory. Every name is auto-imported anywhere that you use them. And uh, this bundle is optimized. So uh, it's pre-shaked and also for smaller platforms. It's just uh, imported when you need it. This is one of the hardest parts that uh, we had in Nitro from the beginning. Uh, Nitro tries to do some optimizations. Uh, basically, when you build your application, in a traditional server application, you install whole node modules in the production environment, which is a black hole, as all we know. And uh, from the beginning, one of the goals of Nitro was to take that away. Uh, one strategy that we use is called external tracing. We use a library uh, which is uh, developed by Verso. Uh, called NFT, and NFT is a tracer. It traces the code and node modules and exactly finds out what you need from the node modules, which is thousands of files, and just gives a list of them. We then need to map these uh, node modules uh, and traced files to a new node module system. It's basically creating a package manager inside Nitro that creates an optimized version of the packages and their dependency tree. Well, of course, it wasn't that simple. Uh, we had some steps uh, to improve it. And finally, in Nitro 2, uh, we introduced a new whole brand rewrite of this tracer. This tracer is much smarter. It deduplicates between different node modules directories. You can have different layers, which are in different projects. It deduplicates them. And it uses a mechanism similar to PMPM uh, to just share these dependencies back. And it's much more stable. It fixed many of the issues we had in the beginning. And uh, it, again, uh, creates a super optimized output directory for you while you have the node modules traced. And also, it fixes some issues, like rewriting the export conditions. Uh, this is one of the things that I really hope to make the public discussion today in GitHub. Keep looking forward for the repository to make it public. But this is something I was always dreaming to have in Nitro. Basically, we went beyond when we made Nitro. We made a new framework that you can use it to make any server for any target, and it can be configured. Uh, 
but we still lack a default format, a standard format, because every platform is introducing their own. We don't have a standard format how a web server application uh, output looks like. And this new not required format uh, is a system that maps the privacy configuration route rules and the output format into an archive. And this archive could be deployed to your Docker platform, it could be deployed to your VPS, or you could also make your own hosting solution using the NitroPods. Uh, it's full open API, so there is no secret in it. Uh, we provide tooling for it, so you can use, your own, use it for your VPS, and it makes it much, much easier to deploy an application to your platform of choice without any hassle. Uh, just keep looking for it. Uh, here are more options and uh, items I'm uh, imagining for the roadmap of this year for Nitro. Uh, one of them, which Sebastian also mentioned, is a, a really exciting package called Kitty. Uh, Kitty is a new CLI builder. It was always dreaming of to make the perfect developer experience for having a CLI. And as of the philosophy of OnJS, we make it a way that it works in harmony. So any CLI, any existing CLI in Nux, Nitro, or any other package we have, it's just going to be upgraded to the city. It's pluggable, so you can uh, plug different CLIs together, and it has some built-in utilities to make some fancy CLIs. Uh, the second thing is the universal WebSocket layer. Uh, currently, Nitro is an HTTP framework. It supports request and responses. It supports HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. But uh, we want to make it further. We want to support a unified WebSocket layer. It is not that easy, because platforms often uh, implement it differently. Even runtimes implement it differently. And uh, between development time and production time, it's also different. We want to make it universal. Single API, you can easily create a WebSocket-powered application with the same experience you already have with Nitro. No hassle. The other thing that... Uh, we are thinking and discussing about is introducing a new logging infrastructure to the Nitro. We already have a powerful package called Consula. Uh, we made it from beginning for, from Nux2 to provide a logging infrastructure. We want to make, move it to the next level, support timing and logging information for server. So we can exactly benchmark what's slow, what's happening in production and development. And also it can be integrated with, of course, systems like storage layer. You can persist your logs. This is usually not easy, because each platform is different. You have to use a library for that. And there is different experience with that. It just unifies that experience. Uh, one of the other things that we was imagining from the beginning of Nitro was an open API integration, basically because we have full data from uh, auto-imported uh, API routes. We already have a really nice TypeScript integration, thanks to the works of Daniel. And we want to move it further to support an open API. Basically, you just write your code you have an open API specification. You can uh, see your API routes. You can try them in the browser. It can be integrated with the DevTools, maybe with Anthony. And uh, it just works out of the box. Uh, one of the other things is the server functions. Server functions is an idea for an RPC system that you can use it to uh, easily call your server routes without using the routing system. You can just call them by name, pass the context, and get the response. It can be later be integrated with the WebSocket layer, so we can have actually a real-time application, and it just moves nicer to beyond uh, just a normal server application builder. And uh, one of the last thing is the health checks. Usually when you deploy an application, uh, you want to make sure that this application works in production before you actually run it. Uh, Nitro currently lacks it, so you have to just deploy it, wait if it works or not, or, and then roll it back. Uh, using a unified API, uh, we provide the providers and a built-in uh, health check system, so we can verify the bundle if there is any issues with it before going to the production, and your pods could be secure from beginning. So uh, why not try Nitro today? Uh, you can try Nitro directly with the Nitro CLA itself. You can try it with Nux3, and you can access the slides and of course, if you're interested, uh, this year we are investing much more time and dedication to the Andres community. If you'd like to contribute to any of the packages, just feel free to uh, leave me a message. Thank you so much.